That's right, I'm bringing you a second video today because in the age-old battle of Team Red versus Team Green, there's some very big developments today. If you just bought a 3090 Ti, thinking you would have the fastest graphics card out there until the next generation, it seems like on May 10th you're about to be proven wrong if the information I have here today ends up being correct. And, well, it looks, it looks pretty legit, guys. What is this? So the folks over at WCCF Tech seem to already have their hands on a 6950 XT, a 6750 XT, and an RX 6650 XT. Now, if you've been kind of out of the loop, what is this? So the 6950 XT is a slight refresh of the 6900 XT, but when I say slight refresh, they might be underselling it because it looks like it might be 20% faster than a 6900 XT, which actually puts it faster than a 3090 Ti. Not just a 3090, a 3090 Ti. The 6750 is also making big gains over its 6700 counterpart, and the 6650 is also making gains over the 6600 counterpart. Now, the, the, what this basically is, is these will be a, a refresh card. This is similar to what NVIDIA does with like, you know, it's super versions that it sometimes comes out with, although it didn't seem to this time around, uh, where there's a bit of a little redesign, a bit of a performance bump, and it, it, we're expecting faster memory, as well as some increased clocks, and that will come along with higher power draw. We'll get to that in a second, but it looks like at WCCF Tech, they not only have these cards, they've benchmarked them in 3D marks. So these are synthetic benchmarks, but it's not something completely silly like Geekbench. This is this is 3D mark and they've done it. And by the way, if you're thinking, oh, it's just Firestrike and AMD always does better in Firestrike. No, we're talking Time Spy, where usually Nvidia does have the lead. And okay, so, so there's a bit of a caveat to this which is that not all of the GPUs that they're stacking this up against were actually tested on the same system, although they are comparing their graphics score, not the full system score. So specifically, they're running these cards on a Ryzen 7 5800X 3D CPU with DDR4 3600 memory. They don't give us the CL timings. Um, and they're uh, giving us these drivers, which I don't believe is necessarily even specifically optimized for these cards yet. I would imagine we'd get some specifically optimized drivers for these cards. So is it possible we could see even better results? I don't know. That's an interesting question though. Now, um, they've run benchmarks with Time Spy, Firestrike, uh, and um, 3D Mark 11, Port Royal, all of that. But the interesting one here is Time Spy. So here's their Time Spy results on these cards. But then they're giving us a comparison graph. And the reason I'm holding off on this is, again, is you, we have to be careful here. These are running different test setups, okay? Now they are just comparing the GPU graphics score. So that's usually not gonna be heavily influenced by the rest of the system. But that is something that we should keep in mind here when interpreting these results. However, without further ado, yeah, that's a 6950 XT scoring 22,209, which is better than the 20,855 from the 3090 Ti, and a lot better than the 19,690 scored by the 3090, and the 19,275 scored by the 3080 Ti. This is a huge jump over the 6900 XT. I was not expect, I was expecting five to 10% performance gain. I was not expecting this 20 plus percent performance gain if this ends up to pan out when we get full reviews of these things. So I, I am a math teacher, so I am qualified. I know this is mind blowing to divide two numbers to produce a percentage gain amount. So this is the 6950 XT divided by the 6900 XT results from their chart. That is over a 20% performance increase. That seems too much, which is, uh, but I don't know what to say. I mean, WCF seems absolutely confident they have these cards, they tested them, and this is the results. Although, like they said, they didn't test the 6900 XT on the same exact system. 
but I don't think that's gonna throw the results off by 20%, you know what I mean? Now, what's this one? So this is the 6750 XT's result uh, from their chart divided by the 6700 XT, non-50 version from their chart, and that's seeing an over 16% performance gain. And this is their 6650 XT divided by the uh, 6600 XT, and that's showing an 11% gain. So at least based on the numbers in their chart, it does seem like the highest end card is getting the biggest boost. Also notice we're not seeing a 6850 XT, so it's very possible that there just won't be one. And that could make sense, because I think a 6850, if it had any kind of jump like this, would pass a 6900 XT. So it kind of seems like the 6900 XT is almost filling that role already of the 6850 uh, that that would play. Although I'm not saying, mean, I don't know, maybe we will see them when, uh, when these actually come out, which is supposed to be on May 10th. Now, they did run some other tests, but they didn't make the full comparison chart. Um, but before we get in there, let's look at a couple other interesting things here. The 6700 XT has famously underperformed compared to its, you know, theoretical competitor given both its MSRP and its naming scheme of the RTX 3070. Well, the 6750 XT does seem to be beating, not, not only catching up to the 3070, but beating it and getting fairly close to a 3070 Ti, although still, still um, behind it. And then the 6650 XT is not catching up to the original 6700 XT, but that is, like I said, a good 11% performance jump. Now, um, they also have fire strike results and such, but I do want to mention, they, they mentioned further down in the article that they overclocked their 3090 Ti, or, or compared it to a heavily overclocked 3090 Ti, and the heavily overclocked, both in memory and core, 3090 Ti was 1% faster than the 6950 XT score. 1% faster. Now here's the thing, is this 6950 XT result, are, are these overclocked? Is that why it's scoring so high? Absolutely not. Um, it says that they are running these at the reference specs, okay? So these are, um, th these scores are completely referenced. These are, as far as I can tell, the reference design boards. These aren't even AIB partner cards. These are the reference design cards running at their stock speeds. Meaning, okay, if a heavily overclocked 3090 Ti is 1% faster, you're gonna have absolutely no problem getting a 1% performance increase from your 6950 XT reference uh, specs. Now, with that in mind, we've also seen uh, leaks showing the 6950 XT like toxic lineup from um, from Sapphire. Their toxic version could boost up to 2565, which is significantly higher than the um, than the uh, reference spec on the 6950 XT reference model that we're seeing in this chart. So we're definitely going to see. Uh, some good results from the AIB partner cards. And a few of those have leaked. Like if you wanna take a look at them quickly, uh, there you go. There's, and then we got some more from Biostar with their 6750 and 6650 XTs. Uh, these ones don't look quite so fancy, but you know, it's, it's, it's Biostar. Uh, so <laughs> anyway, we're expecting these on the 10th. Now, before we go, uh, we will take a look at some of these other scores. So Fire Strike is the one where we usually see, um, where we do usually see AMD have an advantage anyway. And they also didn't show us their uh, performance versus all the other competitors in this one. Uh, but if you do wanna just see the scores they got to compare it to yourself or, or, or look those up, I'll show them here quickly um, if, if you're interested on these results. And then they did also run Port Royal, where um, I'm sure has a, uh, that's the ray tracing one, right? I'm sure if we saw this stack up against the NVIDIA competitors, we would once again, of course, see them get uh, decimated in ray tracing performance. Uh, because as far as I know, there's nothing really here other than, you know, speeding everything up could help its ray tracing performance a little bit, but it's not like gaining more ray tracing cores or, um, you know, new ray tracing tech or anything like that. So don't get too excited there. So they also have their 3D Mark 11 graphic scores up here as well for you to take a look at. 
So very interesting stuff here. Um, that is a much bigger performance gain if this all pans out with full reviews than I was expecting, which is really exciting. So then one of the big questions is, you know, how much is it going to cost? I hope they, they launch these at the normal MSRP and they don't try to price gouge because we're seeing the NVIDIA competitors, um, prices on the normal market actually finally coming down a bit. I think AMD really did need to either boost performance or lower prices. I think that this boost of performance, if they come in at the normal MSRP and actually sell around that, I think that'll give people a good reason to consider grabbing them instead of a similarly priced NVIDIA competitor, which will still have the DLSS and ray tracing advantages, encoder advantages, uh, just more mind share people, you know, just know the brand better, all of that. Um, so I think having strictly better performance and having the fastest graphics card will be huge. Now, this is just time spy. It's just time spy. So it'll be very interesting to see how this pans out in actual gaming performance, and we do need to keep that in mind. Uh, but this is very interesting. Uh, one last quick little bit of news I guess I'll just throw in here too, is that AMD uh, on their CPU side of things did confirm uh, some products coming up that we expected to be coming up and we've seen leaks and rumors about for a long time now. Here's, ah, I shrink myself down. Uh, so we are seeing uh, Raphael confirmed for the end of 2022 uh, with its Zen 4 platform, DDR5, PCIe 5, 65 watts. Notice DDR5 not also supporting DDR4. Um, and then we're also seeing some laptop chips here. Uh, with Dragon Range, which is really interesting, which seems to be the uh, number one choice for mobile gaming dominance, according to AMD, you know, uh, which will feature Zen 4 architecture achieving the pinnacle of gaming performance, highest core thread and cache ever for a mobile gaming CPU. So I'm assuming what that means is that we might see the um, 16 cores rather than just eight cores in the mobile segment now, which would be interesting. Um, and they're saying it's fastest creator and productivity performance ever for mobile PCs. We also have Phoenix down here uh, with Zen 4 LP DDR5, PCIe 5, and 35 to 45 watts of power draw. And this is targeting a thin and light gaming, uh, less than 20 millimeters. So these would be your like high-end, thick boy, big gaming uh, laptops, and these would be for your, your thin and lights. Uh, and all the rumors point to Phoenix being kind of awesome. Uh, I'll, I'm really excited to see uh, what to make out of that once it launches. Anyway, guys, I think that's it for the video here. Are you guys excited for this stuff? Kind of hard to get excited when the next gen's kind of around the corner, but still really good to see for anybody who is going to be grabbing a graphics card here before those come out. Um, and I hope this, this performance all pans out um, in full reviews and actual games. I hope all of you have an excellent day.